Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you my interesting collection of analog handheld games. Now, these are games which are older than retro gaming consoles that you are familiar with, and they have issues. In this video, I'll go through how I fix those issues and how these games are played. I will also advise you on which game you should collect. Alright, I will summarize all the fixes I've done. First of all, in the seller's video, you notice he had to keep on pressing this red button. The moment he released the red button, the car would stop. And the reason for that is because the two plastics here, which are holding to the copper contact points inside, are broken. And here I have glued them in place. In the original game where everything is working as it should like now, when you press this red button, the timer will start to move counterclockwise and the moment it passes the 12 o'clock, the copper legs inside will make contact with the chrome metal plate to ensure continuity so that you do not have to hold on to the red button anymore, you could release it. And the continuity of the current would be maintained by these two copper legs touching the chrome plate. And once it finishes, it will come to this point here. You can see that one of the copper legs is not touching the chrome plate and the circuit is broken and the race would stop. So that's done. As for the gears, it's more tricky and what I've done is I've taken apart this gearbox here yep make sure this rod gets out and then you could flip it this way the gears are okay except for this part here which is broken so what I have done is I use a heat string. This yellow piece is a heat string. And I super glue the top part and the bottom part. So this whole chunk here should be a continuous piece. And also I've removed all the free play. As you can see, I added washers here. And there's no free play now. And likewise, I removed all the free play for all the gears. Previously, there was a lot of free play going on, so some of the gears would not mesh properly, and we have issues due to that. So with this, the gearbox is working, and that's the second issue fix. The third is actually the cosmetic issue. There's a big hole here. You can see in the camera, it's a big broken hole. It looks pretty bad but I have fixed it with epoxy and, and file it down so that it looks smooth and I spray it with a coat of matte black so you could hardly see the major defect and now everything seems to be working oh wait there's a fourth issue which I forgot to mention it is known as the sticky counter problem so this counter here counts the lap when you are racing and the problem with the sticky counter is this first digit will stick to the second digit when the second digit moves from 0 to 9 the first digit here will follow so you will see it moves like 0, 0, 0, 4, 16, 2, 8 where we get the idea to solve this problem I simply added a spring here this is the kind of spring you will find in battery holder yeah just a simple fix like that and everything works 
perfectly now, I'm pretty sure. I'm play a game to show you that it works. Alright, to play the game, I'm going to set the gear to neutral. And first thing is we set the counter to zero. That's zero. Next, I'm going to press down the red button here and hold it there until this needle moves to the start position. Score is 51. The second another game I'm going to show you is hit and missile here and it is in very mean condition as you can see. It works fine except for the timer. The mechanical timer is not working so this game runs forever and you can't really compete with your friend when there's no time limit because these games work on the basis of the scoring system within a limited time interval. So instead of trying to fix the mechanical timer, I decided to go with a different approach and this time I will use an Arduino to fix this. Now that we have written the simple codes, let's compile it and upload it to the Pro Micro Arduino. Yeah, there are no errors, so it's uploading now. That's done. Well, one thing I hear about these analog handheld games is they do not use AA batteries. They use the C-type batteries, which are more expensive. And hence, I got these little adapters, which will take in a AA battery and turn them into a C-size. For the same reason, for this test, I do not have to use C-size batteries. I'm using a AA batteries, since they will work in the handheld games with these adapters. Alright, here's the entire setup. We have the 3 volts power supply and the 3 volts power supply gets tapped up to 5 volts to power the Arduino. Although this is a 3.3 volts Arduino, if I run it with 3.3 volts, the relay will not be able to work and hence I have to power it with a 5 volts coming from this step up regulator. And here we have the relay switch that is controlling the power to the analog handheld game and the logic control is this red wire here which is the digital pin pin number 16 as per the Arduino codes and here we have another wire connected to the analog pin pin A1 and A1 is the input analog reading it reads the power supply so if this power supply drops to below 2.55 volts, it will run a specific sequence. If the power supply is above 2.55 volts, then it will activate the relay and it will count down one minute before turning off the entire system. Alright, here's the moment of truth. I've hooked up the wires to the battery terminals. Now I'm going to test with the weak batteries here. Remember in our Arduino codes, we have a sequence that will activate if the batteries are weak. So let me power up and show you what happens. Yep, that's working correctly. So the motor is making three beeps 
to indicate that the voltage is too low and we have to replace the batteries. Now let me change the battery. This is a new battery and this should increase the voltage and the game will be able to start with no problems. Alright, I've reset the counter to zero, 00. Now let's power up and see what happens. Alright, that's my score there. I think it's um, 14. Yeah, I'm not trying my best to play the game. I'm just trying to test the Arduino system, make sure the codes are working. And as you can see, the timer did work. After one minute, you could hear the motor making five beeps. And then it comes to a complete stop. And you can then pass this game to a friend and he could complete your score simply by power off and on. To keep the electronics as compact as possible, I tape them up with heat resistant tape and then I tuck them in here in this cavity so they do not get in the way of the mechanics. Next, I cut the yellow and white wires and I soldered them to the red wire going to the relay. And then I soldered the red wire to the positive of the battery to supply power to my electronics. And lastly, I soldered the ground supply from the switch here going to the electronics. Alright, let's put everything back together and then see how it looks like. Now the handheld game has been put back together. As you can see here, the timer is freewheeling. It's not catching to the gears, but no longer matters since we have the Arduino to handle the timing. Let me show you that it still works. I'm sure this is a very unique hit and missile system is the only one that does that. Finally, the third game which I'm going to show you is the Digital Daredevil here. It is in mint condition as you can see. There are a few scratches due to wear and tear. And the timer is not working, just like the hit and missile game. So we're going to use the Arduino method to fix it. Other than that, the game works well. So let's get cracking with the fix. Here's our Arduino timer for the Digital Daredevil game. These two wires will connect to the battery terminals. And I'm going to cut this yellow wire here. And the two ends will connect to the relay switch. Alright, here's how it looks like with the electronics installed. On the right, we have the switch that allows us to toggle between Pro 1 and Pro 2. Pro 2 is a lot harder because it's easier to collide with the objects due to the bigger contacts, copper contacts inside. So I'm going to switch to the small metal contacts which is Pro 1 and that makes it harder to end up with a collision and easier for the gameplay. It's the jump button to jump the bike over obstacles and this is the speed. For wide objects you need to gain speed so that you could jump over it. For narrow objects you could jump over it using the low speed and this is the pass button. So when you have a collision the bike will do a somersault 
and it will be in a rack position and you could press this button to get through that object let me show you how it works score is 56. Among the three analog handheld games, my favorite is the Digital Daredevil. It's such a mechanical marvel. Just look at the details. Even the wheels of the motorcycle are moving. And the gameplay reminds me of the Flappy Bird game, which was banned some time ago. Where gameplay is concerned, the most addictive one is Hit and Missile. You could spend half an hour playing this game and you don't find it boring. However, the most expensive is Digital the B Raceway. So if you're thinking of collecting, this is the one that you should go for. For the Hit and Missile game, I found this nice carrying case for it and I'm going to give it to my friend for his birthday. That's all I have for this video. I hope you enjoy the content and I'll see you next time.